Hello, and welcome to episode number 408 of the Team in 2020 Challenge Run. This is going to be raw for week 1 of September 2023 as we continue the build towards Unforgiven on the raw side. Um, we've got no matches confirmed for the show so far, but that will change on tonight's show. And yeah, I mean, we haven't got a main event announced. We've got a couple of matches announced though, including Christian taking on Carlito. We've got Seamus, Ridge Holland, and the Cyclone against um, LA Extreme. And we've got Bailey taking on Zelina Vega, amongst other great matches that we'll have announced tonight. Without any more further ado, though, let's jump straight into tonight's show. We kick off the show with Cody Rhodes. Cody comes to the ring, he goes, Whoa! And then, as he, as he hits the whoa, um, Finn Balor and AJ Styles' as music hits, and the tag team champions come out behind him, and they all, like, get into the ring together. And he goes, So... Last week, I came to this ring and I made my message perfectly clear to the so-called WWE Champion, to Drew McIntyre. You see, at SummerSlam, Drew McIntyre, he was the better man. I, I'll admit it, he may have cheated to win my WWE Championship, but the fact that I'm standing here no longer the WWE Champion proves... One thing, and that is that on the night, Drew McIntyre got the better of Cody Rhodes. So, imagine my shock when I come out here last week and I say to Drew McIntyre to his face that I want a rematch for my WWE Championship, and he says no? That tells me all I need to know about Drew McIntyre, the man. <clears throat> but last week... It wasn't even about Drew McIntyre. My focus is not on Drew McIntyre. It's on Imperium. You see, last week, Imperium, Gunther sent Giovanni Vinci. He sent Ludwig Kaiser to the ring to accompany Drew McIntyre in our main event against the Bullet Boys. Too sweet, me brothers. And he got a too sweet to AJ and Finn. There he goes. So, I need to know... Gunther, is there a problem between us? Gunther and Imperium then walk out onto the stage. And Gunther goes, Cody Rhodes, you talk a lot. And to answer your question, Cody, no. There's no problem between me and you. At least, not right now. You see, my focus is on making sure Imperium finds success here on Raw. And that includes Ludwig Kaiser and Giovanni Vinci as Raw's tag team champions. And that includes me, Daring General, as WWE champion. Now, last week, I came to the aid of Drew McIntyre, not for the, to come to the aid for Drew McIntyre, no, but because Ludwig Kaiser and Giovanni Vinci want not what you've got, Cody Rhodes, but the two men behind you have. And last week, Giovanni Vinci pinned one half of the Raw Tag Team Champions in that main event. So Cody, for once in your godforsaken life, take a step back, realize this isn't all about you. And how about we make a challenge? And then Ludwig takes the mic and he goes, AJ Styles and Finn Balor, you have reigned as the Raw Tag Team Champions for a while now. But that's because you're yet to put those championships on the line against Imperium. So tonight, how about you give us the chance to add to our collection as Ludwig Kaiser and Giovanni Vinci challenge you for the Raw Tag Team Champions. And then AJ and Vince will look at each other and go, a title match tonight in the main event. Guess what, boys? You're on. And then Gunnar goes, great. And once Ludwig and Giovanni have become the WWE have become the WWE Raw Tag Team Champions. I, 
will become the WWE champion. And I don't care if I've got to go through Drew McIntyre, a man I've already beaten to become world champion here on Raw. Or if I've got to go through the American Nightmare. Imperium will reign dominant over Monday Night Raw. So yeah, there's our main event set up. Raw Tag Team Championship match on the line. As Ludovic Kaiser and Giovanni Vinci of Imperium challenge AJ Styles and Finn Balor for the Raw Tag Team Championships. Drew McIntyre wasn't in this segment. I don't. I obviously forgot to put him off screen. But yeah. Main event tonight. Vinci and Kaiser against AJ and Finn. We then cut backstage to Kathy Kelly, who's with Roxy Perez. She says, Roxy, you know... Last night on the WWE Network on Peacock, you know, you can go watch it now, the May Young Classic kicked off, and the May Young Classic will be continuing with the next round of A-Block matches on Heat following tonight's show. And obviously, you know, this is a tournament, you know, with a lot of interest for you at rating as the Liberty Champion, you know, the winner of this tournament gets a shot at that championship. So, you know, what's going through your mind after the first round, you know, who's really caught your eye? Because it's great to see so many, you know, names, both new and old, and those getting the chance to really showcase their skills on a national level for the first time. It's an opportunity that I wish I had but when I first came to WWE. I see names like, you know, Mayu Ibotani, an icon in Japan. I see names like Sarah Amado, who trained me and everybody else down in the Performance Center, who's finally getting her big break. And I just see talented women from NXT who are going to be the future of this industry. And it could go any way, Kathy. But you ask me who I want to win, I've made no bones about who I want to win. That's Jade Cargill. I know you look at someone like Jade and you look at me and you think, I'm the underdog, but I'm the underdog my whole life. And if Jade thinks she can come out here, dominate me and dominate her way to the top and take this championship... It's going to be a harsh reality check for her. And then in walk Shayna Baszler and Carmella. And Shayna's like, little girl's talking all tough over here, Mella. You know? She's the thing that she's going to be the nice reality check here on Raw. Because she's got a cute little championship. And Carmella goes, well, last time I checked, Shayna, you were the baddest woman on this Raw Women's Division. And where's your championship match? Now, we haven't even got a tag team championship match since we came back. And Roxy goes, well, I'm, I'm always well op- open for change of opportunities, but you got to earn them first. And then she goes, okay, well, me and Mella, you know, if you can find yourself a partner tonight, we'll team up and we'll beat you and your partner. And then we'll get a change of opportunity and we'll take that Liberty Championship off you. How do you I'm going to worry about Jade Cargill. I'll take care of her or whoever wins this May Young Classic. And then Kyrie walks in. He sort of just looks at Roxy, he looks at the bell, and then looks across at Chain and Carmella and goes, You're on. And then he goes, Okay, I've beat you a bunch of times already, it's fine. So I guess Kyrie steps in as Roxy's partner for that tag team match coming later on tonight. Opening match of the show gets a 77, which I guess is decent, with a balance of like the good people in this match, as well as people that aren't quite over yet. Um, it's LA Extremes, Rouge, Santos Escobar, Dominic Mysterio, and Jorge Santana, who do pick up the win over Seamus Ridge Holland and the Cyclone. Dominic pins Ridge, you know, with a roll-up, grabbing a handful of tights or whatever. Um, Jorge was off his game and was the weak link, but, you know, he's the project of the bunch, because, yeah. Um, 87 for Bronson Reed, 93 for Ricochet, 70 for Ridge, 83 for Sheamus, 57 for Jorge Santana, 76 for Dominic, 70 for Santos, and a 74 for Roosh. So yeah, a big win for LA Extreme here, and Dominic cheats to get the upper hand on Ridge Holland, and technically score a win over the Intercontinental Champion. But then cut backstage, Rick Boogs is in the GM's office when Becky walks in. She goes, Boogs, she goes, Where's Dave? Because Dave's not here this week. It's, it's, it's all it's all B. It's all me. It's all Ricky B. She goes, great. Just the man I wanted to see them. Because, you know, Dave, last week, you know, sort of put me on heat. Because apparently I need to prove my worth here to this to the company again. Because I lost at SummerSlam after being so long. But anyway, irrelevant stuff. But 
You saw how I won that match in quick order against whoever that dope was last week. So, you know, you, you know I'm a star here on Raw. And Boo's, he's sort of like looking at a piece of paper on his deck, at de- desk as Becky's talking. She goes, what? He goes, oh, Dave just left me a couple of notes, you know, things I need to take care of while he's away. And one of them here, yes, Becky is booked for Heat. Uh, it's going to be the four May Young Classic matches and then your match because, you know... You may have beaten whatever her name was you beat last week, but that's whatever her name was last week. You haven't actually beaten anybody here in WWE just yet. So you still need to prove your worth to this brand. But he goes, oh, whatever. Whatever dope you want to bring up, whoever's right at the bottom of the totem pole that you want to bring up, send them out there and I'll beat their ass as well. Because this is getting ridiculous, Boogs. And he goes, hey, I don't make the rules around here, because I just enforce them. When they cut backstage, Brooks Jensen's with all of J-Flow. When Otis walks up, and he's still in, you know, in maximum male model clothes. And Brooks, Brooks and Mackie just laugh. And he goes, what? He goes, oh, dude, man, what what happened to you? What, what, what are you dressing like that for? And he goes, it's a, it's a call back from the from the male model thing I did last week. Puss goes, call back. I, I thought you, I thought you got rejected. And Otis goes, and then Tony Breeze walks in and goes, no, you see here, only a dumb businesswoman, dumb fashionista like myself would reject the greatest, next greatest male model in Otis. Because you see, it's a reason why you wouldn't have accepted someone like you, Brooks, is because you're straight head to toe in tacky J Flow merch and whatever that ridiculous hat is. But Otis, he can be molded into my vision. And as a matter of fact, he's getting his tryout once again tonight. And we're going to bring him ringside for Elven Kit's tag team match. Come on, Otis, come with me. And then Tony sort of walks off. And <laughs> Otis sort of looks at Tony as he walks off, then looks back at Brooks, and he's like, Come on, dude. Like, you know, we're partners. Then he turns around and he walks off with the Max and Male models to go be ringside for their match. 82 for this tag team match. That's pretty fucking good. Carmella needs to, you know, pick up the slack. <laughs> uh, yeah. But it is Kyrie Sane and Roxy Perez who beat the Fierce and the Fabulous. Roxy pins Carmella with the. Uh, pop, rock. Uh, hold on. Um, so I'm gonna take you through the emotions I've just got reading this because I'm sure you've read what it says on the screen as well, and I, I'm just sort of like taken aback. I first a I didn't know this was a thing you could do in TW, so that's noted. B why was the title on the line? Uh, <laughs> oh thank fuck I had Roxy win then otherwise that. <laughs> title change um actually no i can i can work with this because now that's in canon like when i look at the um the title match history of the liberty title that will be in there so like i may as well just rework the segment from earlier on and be like oh it's not just shaming all the time match carmella also does and but they're a tag team yeah 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 and she could defend it in a tag title match or a tag match tonight and Kyrie stepped in and then Roxy retained. Okay, that's the new law. But I didn't realise that this was a thing that TW could do. I didn't realise I could defend singles championships in tag title matches. That's that's new to me. I mean, it makes sense because it's happened in real life. But yeah, whatever. <laughs> whatever. That's the new law. Roxy's retained the championship in this tag team match against Carmella and Shayna Baszler. 85 for Roxy, 90 for Kyrie, 88 for Shayna, 59 for Carmella. Yeah, nice. Now that getting an 82 makes a little bit more sense. But then after the match, Kyrie gets a hold of the title. And she, like, puts it on Roxy's shoulder and then, like, looks at it. Like, pats, pats the title on her shoulder and whatever. And just walks off. Obviously, you know, intentions, signals, clear about what she, what, what she wants, why she came to the aid of Roxy tonight out of nowhere. We then cut to Reggie walking to 
the anime room where the anime boys are waiting. He goes, I did it. Sensei, Manny, Dio. I was victorious on velocity, you know. Sensei, show. So now, have I proven my worth that I'm valuable to this team? And Manny goes, let me get me this straight. You want to join the club of uncovering mysteries? You want to join CUM? Because you beat R.E. Sterling? Reggie goes, CUM? I, I don't want to join CUM. That's a stupid name. And that man, he goes, yeah, yeah, I, I, so I've heard, but, you know, I really like it. And then Dio's like, yeah, he really likes Com. But you said something about the pendant last week. You said the pendant's back out there, and, you know, miraculously, I see Joe Gacy on the show last week, so, you know, that, that, that can't be a coincidence. Richie goes, oh, it's not. And Manny goes, great, just what we wanted to hear. So Gacy's the one with the pendant. And Richie goes, no, Gacy, Gacy doesn't have it, but, you know. His return and the pendant going missing, those aren't coincidences that they happened at the same time. Manny goes, well, what do you mean, Reggie? And he sort of just looks off, like, like he's ignoring everybody. And then Manny grabs him and shakes him and goes, what do you mean, Reggie? He goes, I don't know, I guess, uh, I guess it's a mystery, you know, that's got to be solved. I guess the club of uncovering mysteries can solve it without me. Manny just sort of sighs. He's like, <sighs> Reggie. And he goes, yes. He goes, would you like to join the Club of Uncovering Mysteries? Reggie goes, oh, I thought you'd never ask, Manny. Now, we have much to discuss. And then they all sort of walk off and Sensei just sat there with the Cruiserweight title. And then Reggie walks back in and goes, oh, by the way, as the one who was on Velocity last week, Drew Gulak, you've got to worry about him. You know, he he's... I think he wants your championship, you know. You're a champion now. You've got more important things to worry about than the fate of the universe, you know, like defending your wrestling title. Okay, bye-bye. And then Reggie, like, sort of backflips. You know what I mean? Like, when he was the 24-7 champion, he'd, like, backflip up the ramp, and that, that's how he exits the frame. <laughs> and Sensei just like, huh, okay, Drew Gulak. I see. They cut to Sasha Banks in the frame. She goes, so, you know, SummerSlam was a big night. SummerSlam saw me in the Tokyo Dome taking on two of the baddest and best here in the Raw Women's Division. Kyrie Sane in her own country. And Charlotte Flair, you know, a woman I've beaten a lot. I stand here still, the WWE Women's Champion. Boss time remains here on the main roster. And that's got me asking, you know, Competition's stiff here on Raw in this women's division. You know, Becky, she's here, you know, apparently grinding her way back up to title contention. I don't know when she's going to be a threat to me. Charlotte's still here. You know, you can never be, she can never be two feet away from a championship. Bailey, my old friend Bailey, is now on this show again. Got people looking to break out like Zelina Vega, Roxy Perez, Kyrie Sane's still here, and a whole lot more. So I look around and I say, girls. Let the competition come to the boss. Rhea Ripley comes out. She gets into the ring. She goes, I think you're forgetting, Sasha. I mean, actually, I, I don't think you've forgotten because you worded yourself very cautiously. You said you wanted competition for your championship. I've won competition for my championship as well if I was, wasn't Rhea Bloody Ripley, okay? Because there's a reason you didn't mention my name. It's because I'm not competition. If I was to face you for that championship, it wouldn't be a competition. I'd do to you what I did to Becky back at SummerSlam. What I did to you back at WrestleMania. And I'd take that championship from you. And you don't want that, do you, Sasha? Because you're trying to run scared like a little girl. You think you're a boss, but you're not actually in charge here, are you? I am. Mommy's always in charge. Charlotte storms out. And she goes, whoa, Rhea. Okay, like, first of all, what you did to Becky at SummerSlam, you know, 
Bravo, you know, that's something I've watched do for a long time. She had that coming, okay. Second of all, Sasha, you want to come out here saying you've always been me? Sasha, you pinned Kyrie at SummerSlam. You didn't pin me. As far as I'm concerned, if she wasn't in the match, it was just me and you one on one. I'd have taken that championship from you at SummerSlam, just like I did, what was it, seven years ago? Sasha goes, you mean just like I beat you back at my in the bank to get this championship, Charlotte? Okay? She goes, oh, okay. Yeah, you want to fight back, you want to clap back at the queen. Okay, well, seeing me have this loud mouth stepping in, in my face trying to come for my championship... Once I take her out, Sasha will be just me and you. And then once again, we'll see who the better woman finally is. Then Boo steps out and he goes, Girls, I've got a great way to solve this. Charlotte Flair and Rhea Ripley, two of the biggest stars in the whole women's division, not just on Raw, but in the entire WWE. And I think Evil Woman would make a great challenger for Sasha's WWE Women's Championship at Unforgiven. So next week, we're going to have ourselves a blockbuster women's main event. It's going to be Charlotte Flair taking on Rhea Ripley with the winner going on to face Sasha Banks for the Women's Championship at Unforgiven. So yeah, there's next week's main event set. Women's title situation picking up. Charlotte just always around the belt. Rhea has a claim for the belt and then Sasha, the champion, of course. The House of Black, Chapter 2, called A Light in the Darkness. Last week we learned of the tragic backstory of one Mr. Alistair Black. His father and his mother, you know, not the best of people, led him down this spooky path where he found, like, the occult and stuff like that. That we've got the light in his darkness. He's talking about, you know, how he, he had nobody to turn to. You know, he was that kid at the back who did everything. He was stacked. He stayed quiet. He had his hood up. And he was trying to, you know, isolate himself from the outside world because his world, his world of darkness and all that stuff, that's where he felt more at home. He felt more alive. And the outside world, to him, this plane that he was born into, it wasn't ready for a, a demon like him. But then a light in the darkness came, and that came in the form of another like-minded individual who saw the world the same way that he saw the world. That being Mr. Brody King, the Mad King. He was another one who didn't let his society beat him down. He's another one who didn't sit back and just take all the shit that his life threw at him. He made himself better. He molded himself in that darkness. And the two of them, amongst all the darkness they lived in, became the light, became the men who everybody would turn to as inspiration. And now, they're back together. And once they've returned here to Raw, it's time to make everybody fade to black. 65, that's, f for this match, pretty good. Um, it's Titus World Record, Shanky and R-Truth. Picking up the win of a pretty deadly. Shanky pins Kit Wilson. Um, I obviously forgot to put in the finish comes. Oh, it does say that, yeah. Kit Wilson should be accidentally hit. OT sees out, out there with the maximum male models and pretty deadly. But he fucks up. You know, or he distracts pretty deadly or whatever. And Big Shanky hits a big boo and pins one of them. Because you know, Shanky's the one who's got to get the rub. He's got to get his pop up relatively quickly. So he gets a 49, a 57 for our truth 57 for L1 Prince and a 64 for Kit Wilson. But it is tightest world record in a standard wrestling match. That's how you know there's a third brand now. Picking up the win of a pretty deadly thanks to, you know, miscommunication with their newest male model, Otis. We then see Kathy Kelly with a defeated Seamus. He's like sort of just pacing around, stretching with Seamus. I understand that you wanted to take this time to address what we saw earlier on today. And he goes, yeah, I did, fella. His dirty dom. He goes, congratulations, kid. You got another one, you wedged one out on me and all reached the fridge here, but but that ain't gonna be it. What, Dom, cause you got the victory tonight? You think you're gonna be the Econel champion? Well, <laughs> let's see how you do one-on-one -on -one with me. 
So how about it? No Conan, no Rush, no Santos Escobar, no Santana, and I'll even leave Ridge the Fridge behind. And it's me and you one on one, mano y mano, for this championship at Unforgiven. And then Chad Gable and Andy Agogo walk in and he goes, Shame, Shame, Seamus, I understand, you know. Things between me and you are history here, you know, have gone a bit, bit, a bit rocky to say the least. But if there's one thing I do, it's damn well, is just respect you. And after we've been at war so many times, I respect the hell out of you. And I proved that several weeks ago by coming to your aid. So now, we may never be friends, but if you've got an, if you need allies in this fight against LA Extreme, oh, Master Gable's got your back, and I'll prove it next week. I'll beat Dirty Dom for you. I'll freshen him up for Unforgiven. And then, when you're holding that change of my pie, you know who to say thank you to. It's me. It's Master Gable. She goes, knock yourself out, fella, you know. I, I understand everybody's desperate to get their hands and kick that little weasel's face in. So, soften him up for me, fella. So yeah, Chad Gable and Dominic next week. Ahead of Dominic versus Sheamus at No Mercy for the Eternal Championship. <laughs> but then cut backstage. Otis, you know, he's he's sad. He's downtrodden. You know, he's just cast the Macho Male models a win. He sort of like takes his sunglasses off. He takes his suit jacket off. And he sadly walks up to Brooks. And Brooks goes, hey man, how, how'd you do? He went, I, I uh... I don't, I don't think I got in. Bruce goes, ah, uh, why? I, you, you, they seem to really, they seem to be really high on you, you know. He goes, nah, it's, it's nothing. And then Jay flows sort off, of drag Brooks and go, match. We've got our match coming up next. And Brooks goes, oh, sorry, Ortiz, I, I've got to, I've got to go. And he goes, come on, but you, you're going to abandon me for them. And he goes, I promised I'll be their ringside for. I'm sorry. And then he walks out with the rest of J-Flo, and then we see Sad Otis sat in his locker room by himself. Tragic. Hate that for him. That match gets a 78, which is actually pretty good. Um, it's against the women's tag team champions, and Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross defeat the team of Mizuki and Mino of J-Flo, when Alexa pins Mino with a Twisted Bliss in 11-41. 63 for Nikki, 78 for Alexa, 73 for Mina, and a 65 for Mizuki. After the match, Alexa and Nikki are standing tall when Joe Gacy sort of like comes out of the crowd and stands in the ring with a mic. And he goes, now I know what everybody watching is thinking. What is happening here? Why has Mr. Joe Gacy returned to Monday Night Raw? And why is he alongside the women's tag team champions? And I say that, why would, you know, an emperor lay his plans out to peasants so peasants know what's going on in the head of a man more powerful than them? So, this, this alliance I've been concocting in the darkness, in the shadows, behind closed doors over the last few months is finally set to come to fruition, and that will begin at Unforgiven when Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross will defend their championships against three teams, one team from Monday Night Raw, one from SmackDown, and a third from ECW. And then, once we beat all three of those teams, that's the entire women's tag team division across all brands, dominated and uh, I think we have the tools to dominate not just the brands here on WWE but the entire place Tatum and Ivy then rush out like from behind and they like jump Alexa and Nikki imagine they've both got like eye patches on and they're like just beating up Alexa and Nikki after jumping out from behind but Joe Gacy sort of like gets in the face he like Pulls off Tatum or something and like gets in the way. 
and he like pulls that creepy Joe Gacy smile at her and she's like sort of taken aback and backs off when Alexa flies in with something and then her and Nikki double team up on Ivy Nile hit a double team finisher on her and then do the same to Tatum and leave them laying as Joe Gacy stands tall in the middle with Alexa and Nikki Cross we then see Gargano and Champa chatting backstage with the New Day and Biggie goes you know I, I saw what your boys have been doing you know you guys last week you know you really fired up Johnny Gargano I see, I see Johnny wrestling he's you know definitely one of the best wrestlers here on Monday Night Raw and you know as, as a former 10 time tag team champions you know we'd love to get into the ring with with DIY and Champa goes oh really you know cause you know New Day obviously you're a great tag team here and DIY and New Day running it in that ring would be one hell of a tag team attraction. Johnny goes, well, our schedules are free next week. You know, AJ and AJ and Finn are against Imperium tonight. Whoever the champions are next week, better keep a close eye. If me and our, our team is going to go at it, what do you say, Kofi Woods? And Woods goes, oh, oh, no, 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 no. It, it, it'll be E and Kofi tag teaming up against you two next week. I've got other things on my mind. I've got another agenda. So it's Ian Kofi's time to shine. And I'll be... I'll be off. At the... You know, the... Request of... My fellow boys in the new day. They said it's the rise of Xavier Woods. And that rise don't stop until I... Complete the prophecy... I complete the New Day Triad, the Triforce of Greatness, as the New Day all become WWE World Heavyweight Champion. And he walks off, the rest of the New Day follow him, and Champa just looks at Gargano and Johnny goes, I think that was a yes, you know, Ian Kofi, and Champa goes, it would appear so, Johnny. <laughs> Christian swaggers his way down to the ring in his turtleneck. And he gets to the microphone and he goes, Now, before I embarrass that idiot mid-carder Carlito, I have to come out here and address some words that I said last week. Last week, a lot of people have been Rather upset with some comments I made towards Rey Mysterio and Carlito here on Raw. Rey Mysterio came out and I called him a terrible father. I called Carlito's father a terrible father. And I called Edge, amongst other things, a piece of crap. And now I just, before this matter, I take the time to say that I am sorry. I'm sorry that you're so hurt by my comments. But most importantly, I'm so sorry that you guys spent 20 years being told that Edge was the greatest, that Rey Mysterio was the greatest, and finally somebody comes out here and speaks the truth. You guys don't want to hear it. I'm not apologizing for what I said. It's you who's to blame. Because you bought into this prophecy that Edge and Rey Mysterio are better people than I am. When they're both equally as demented and twisted and pieces of shit as anybody who came before them. Okay? Now Edge, you know, how got to do with him for a long time, you know? I sent him back to retirement because his neck's a little bit messed up. But Rey, Rey, you're still clanging on here and, you know... You are a terrible father figure. I don't. I take that back. So you know, Dirty Dom's off on his own right now. He's beginning to become Intercontinental Champion, so he's in control of his own destiny. But you know, if your your daughter's looking for a new father, if little Aaliyah's at home saying that her dad is a disappointment, she knows where to find a real father. And Angie, if you're looking for a real husband who's not a piece of shit like Rey Mysterio. Give Christian a call. Now, Ray, we could continue these 
petty attacks that you've been doing on me. I would never stoop that low. I would never stoop as low as Rey Mysterio was stooped last week. But we can settle this man to man. I know you're not really a man, Rey Mysterio. Both literally and figuratively, you're only half a man. But if you wanted to at least try and redeem yourself in the eyes of these people, you'll accept my challenge for a one-on-one singles match at Judgment... No, Judgment Day. At Unforgiven. But now, bring Carlito out here. Because, kid, it's time to show you what a real father can do. Because your father, he did a lot of messed up things. But they'll pale in comparison to what I'm about to do to you. 73, Christian beats Carlito cheating in 1019. Uses a foreign object, it says. I don't know what that would be. <laughs> um... Maybe he's got something hidden in his turtleneck or something. But yeah, Christian does win. 77 for Christian, 42 for Carlito, and a 73 for the match. Then after the match, Dijak picks up Carlito. He goes to hit Feast Your Eyes. Rey Mysterio comes rushing out. He rushes to the ring and he, like, pulls Carlito off and he, like, kicks the legs of Dijak. Sends him packing with a drop kick to the outside. Christian follows him on the outside. Then Dijak gets on the apron. He's, like, snarling at Rey. And then Christian sort of just taps him on the shoulder and goes, Come on, get out of here. He's not worth it. It's not worth wasting your time on a piece of shit like this. I'll see you at Unforgiven. I'll put you on the shelf. I'll retire you just like I retired Edge. So yeah, Rey Mysterio and Christian. One-on-one at Unforgiven. And they get a quick video. It's Humberto and Zia Lee back at the Path of the Dragon training mountain. Um, Tazawa's not there. Zergus isn't there, so it's now just these two. And Humberto's talking. I imagine he's actually talking in Spanish, but it's subtitled. And he says, I was so lost. Alone. Before this team. This team helped me become a fighter. This team helped me become a champion. This team helped me become one of the greatest on Raw. Zergus's betrayal, you know, set me back. And at SummerSlam, I failed to overcome that Goliath, which only awoken me that I need more training. If Umberto Corillo is going to stand here by himself, honoring the path of the Dragon Legacy, he's going to need to do more training. And when I come back, it's no more playing games. Because I'm back for one thing and one thing only. And that's to cement my legacy. As the dragon. Eighty-one. Um, pretty good match here. Bailey against Zelina Vega. Um, yeah, Bailey wins in twelve minutes and eight seconds by Rose Plant. Um, Eighty-three for Bailey, seventy-six for Zelina. Zelina was off her game. Bailey's got a strong connection with the young female demographic. Apparently, still in twenty twenty-three, even though she's very much, you know, an asshole. <laughs> But yeah, Bailey does win her Raw debut, picking up a win over a very game Zelina Vega here tonight. But we have a pretty stacked show next week. Three pretty big matches that could all be relatively incredible. Starting off with the number one contenders match to determine Sasha Banks' challenger at Unforgiven. It will be Rhea Ripley taking on Charlotte Flair. With the winner going on to one for given to fight Sasha Banks for the WWE Women's Championship. And, as we heard earlier on tonight, Chad Gable, the former Intercontinental Champion himself, takes on Dirty Dom ahead of Dominic Mysterio's Intercontinental Championship match against Sheamus at Unforgiven. And a big tag team match. Which tag team will get momentum heading into a potential future Raw Tag Team Championship match? That's not been confirmed as of yet. It's Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa, DIY. Taking on the New Day's Big E and Kofi Kingston in tag team action. But that's next week Raw, and then two weeks, three weeks from, two weeks from Sunday. Sorry, finally got it right. We do have Unforgiven, and we have our first matches set for that show. Which includes this match. Christian's disgusting antics over the past few weeks have drawn the ire of Rey Mysterio. And it will be Christian taking on Rey Mysterio in a singles grudge match. 
two weeks time on Sunday at Unforgiven. And we're just hearing now from the desk of Batista and Rick Boogs that this Women's Liberty Championship match has been made official. It will be the champion Roxy Perez defending her championship against Kairi Sane and Sheamus challenging Dirty Dom to a match. Sheamus is the champion but he's still the one who laid out the challenge to Dirty Dom for a match. No LA Extreme, no Ridge Holland, just mano a mano for the NFL Championship at Un. Forgiven. Then see Zelina defeated walking through the hallway. And Kathy Kelly walks up. She goes, Zelina, you know, tough break that. And she goes, tough. Kathy, tough break to suddenly begin to cut it, okay? You know, I thought that, you know, LWO, you know, blowing up. And I, I, I just stand on my own two feet. And I have to, you know, sink or swim. But <laughs> there's a lot of sharks in this pool, Kathy, and they all want my blood. Tonight, I proved that maybe I'm not ready. Maybe I was only ever supposed to be, you know, the cheerleader for the LWO. Maybe I was only ever supposed to be that mouthpiece. Maybe I'm out of my depth. Maybe I'm a lot of things, Kathy, but one thing I'm not is a quitter. So, I don't know what the path takes me here on Raw. Maybe I've just got to be me. I will say this. I'm going to fight for what's right. I'm going to go where I'm needed. I'm not going to sit back and wait for my to come to me. I'm going to make a difference on this damn show. Whatever I have to do. He storms into a, ho- uh, into a locker room and slams the door shut. Locks it. Cavi go- Galley's like, huh? Cool. Main event time. Main event gets a 93. Uh, yeah. It goes 1847, Imperium, def- not Imperium defending, um, AJ and Finn defending against Imperium. You know. And we got a nice back and forth match here. I imagine at some point Gunter's out there, but Cody Rose would come out and fight him off. And they'd fight to the back. And then AJ and Finn are getting the, getting the leg up. But the referee's distracted, kicking out Cody and Gunter. When AJ flies in and he's met with a Claymore from Drew McIntyre. Drew, Drew drops AJ with the, with the Claymore. He drops Finn with one at ringside as well. Or he just walks through the crowd. Just leaving his destruction in, 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 the, in his wake. And then when Vinci and Kaiser get to their feet, they get groggy. They hit that Imperial Bomb on AJ Styles. And pin him. And we have new Raw Tag Team Champions to end the show. Finally. Ludwig. His collection has been growing since he came here on Raw like a year and a half ago. He's finally got a championship of his own to add to his collection. Him and Giovanni Vinci are the Raw Tag Team Champions. 92 for Kaiser. 89 for Vinci. 92 for Finn Balor. And then 81 for AJ Styles. And yeah, big title change. New Raw Tag Team Champions to close off this Raw. And a 93 rated match. Which ends the show, getting us a 93 rated show. And yeah. And we actually got a pretty big episode of Heat coming up next. It's going to have five matches on it. It's going to have the four A block matches um, for the next round of the Mae Young Classic. As well as... Becky Lynch's match, whoever she may be against. So I'll see you on the other side for those. We kick off the show <laughs> with a quick four minute match. Becky defeats B Fab in four minutes and 13 with a man handle slam. 86 for Becky, 50 for B Fab. And yeah, I, I know what this is, you know. Um, when I said, oh, Becky's got to start from the very bottom and work her way up to the top, and then B Fab's the first opponent, that means like. In the perception is that B-Fab is the very bottom of the division. Don't worry. You know, B-Fab stands. You know, all of you out there. Um, there was a reason I specifically picked her for that spot. <laughs> um, it's it's part of something that will come into play later down the line for Hit Row. But yeah, Becky picks up the win. Quick, quick fashion. A little bit longer than the random ass squash match she had last week. But yeah, you know, mid-card Bex 
or I guess open intro of Heat Bex is picking up wins. We then kick on to the um, <laughs> May Young Classic A block matches. The first being Nikita Lyons against Lola Vice because, you know, this would fucking destroy Twitter. <laughs> He would get the we would win the demos over Raw probably because of this match, but Nikita Lyons does pick up the win. She lost last week to Kalani Jordan by roll up, but she does beat Lola Vice this week. Lola I think won last week but lost now, so yeah I think they both have two points in the tournament now. I will go over the standings after next week's heat. I'll go over the A and B blocks. Yeah, thirty nine. For a match with no important people in it, that's good. Sarah Amato, though, does pick up her first win. You know, she lost in the main event of the special to Jay Cargill. And, yeah, she's picked up her first win now, beating Melanie Gray in 13, 53 for LaBelle Locke, 53 for Sarah, 41 for Melanie Gray. The next match is not two unimportant women, because apparently Raven Creed is incredibly over, but it is Raven Creed... Defeating Kalani Jordan in 8 minutes and 40 with a neck breaker. 43 for Raven Creed, 21 for Kalani Jordan. Now, our main event is again Jade. She's going to be taking on Carmen Petrolich in 38. That's actually better than I thought. I thought this was going to be really bad. Which, I mean, 38 is really bad. But, you know, it's it's in terms of the May Young Classic matches, it isn't. But Jade does beat Carmen 10 minutes and 18. Jade did. She's now 2 0 with two victories in this tournament. And that ends the show. Very quick episode of Heat, but an important one because it is Heat storylines. I know Heat storylines haven't really been prevalent at all, ever, but they are on halt, basically. <laughs> the one time I have a Heat storyline going on, um, I booked the May Young Classic. So, yeah. But I've got, I've got a suite of fifth match onto every single episode of Heat because Becky's also got to do her stuff. But, yeah, what well, matters more is what you thought of the show, Raw specifically. And I'll see you next time for episode 409, which will be ECW, which features Adam Cole challenging Dolph Ziggler for the ECW Championship. See you then.